All right, guys, we got uh, just a couple or maybe 11 Unimogs to work on today. All right, guys, welcome to the channel. It's Clinton from CNC Equipment. As you guys can see, we have a whole fleet of Unimogs. We just got in this previous week. I think one's actually inside, so there's 10 sitting out here. But uh, we've worked on a couple of them. We're just gonna go through and do a video on uh, everything we do when we check them out. There's a lot of uh, different, different quirky stuff on them. And it's a little different in some stuff. So we've got uh, some tires to replace on some. We've got out here, forklift man's got into some of those. So we're gonna get some tires changed on some of these and get one of these dudes uh, rolled in the shop here. All right, so Kevin's getting service truck so we can uh, take some tires up, air some up. Some of them I think might uh, take some air. The other ones, forklift driver's been into, stabbed holes in them, all that good stuff. The government's hard on stuff. Some of these I think may take some air. Good enough to get them uh, loaded up. This is what these crazy forklift people do. Tear up perfectly good working unimogs, and then we gotta fix them all. Just take a little tip. It's like you hit that door there. Take a little pride in what they're doing. They wouldn't tear up so much stuff. It's always something. Giving these a quick one throw that one's definitely got a hole in it. We had a couple of those with the backhoe up running last week so i know those are good we'll get uh we'll get these aired up and then we'll get her pulled in the shop and we'll go through one you know you just dropped it on my impact right <laughs> no it's gone <laughs> what's more you what's... quit helping and start running that camera <laughs> what's milwaukee gonna say about this it's under warranty under warranty i think that one's flat, flat on one side I'll put a little of this wd on there so we're trying to get tires on these so they're all mobile and rolling kevin was going to get my service truck but somebody left the uh, glove box door open you said we need to go down you need to go down i can do that you ready yes man indeed how much keep going keep going keep her going Keep on coming. Keep on coming. All right, Hope. We got to take advantage of these warm days in January. It's supposed to be 50 tomorrow. I think it's like, what is it? Probably 40, 30? Yeah. Well, it feels like 60 to us, but people in Florida are freezing right now. Is that good on your height? Yeah, come up just a touch. Now you're gonna make me start it. There you go. All right, we got like uh, 20 more tires to do. We're gonna go ahead and get those uh, change while it's nice and warm out today and then we'll roll one in the shop in the meantime i'm gonna stick a video in here of me unloading these things
Alright guys, just got another load of Unimogs in. We're getting ready to uh, unload them. I had four of them show up this morning. All right, let me know what you thought about us unloading those things in the comments below. Uh, so that's about the quickest way when we're uh, in a hurry and trying to air tires up on trailers and get them to roll off. It's a pain in the butt, so we use just forklift. And you can be real careful and pick up under a couple of hooks under there. Fortunately, the military is not quite that careful. You guys might see some evidence of that later on when we get this thing in the shop. But we're going to get that in there. we got a checklist we go through. We'll probably lift it up on the lifts. Um, we'll check all the gearboxes in it go through the fuel system and all that kind of stuff i'll probably do a second video of just operating this thing itself um going through all the functions around the backhoe and the loader transmission four-wheel drive system all that auxiliary hydraulics we'll we'll touch on some of that in this video but like i say i'll probably do a separate video um on that so this one here i think it's a, all of them's in the 88 to 1990 range but you notice this one's got a rebuild tag on it was overhauled 
2009 so it is showing 5800 miles i believe but as you can see it's not been used very much at all since it was overhauled so looks like it was received at army base in 2012 so it's probably been sitting for 10 years more than likely um like most of these you guys can see the mold and stuff up on there so anyway we'll get it drug in the shop and you guys um not seen it probably about four years ago or so there's a show called dirt every day um, i'll put a link in the description down below they actually come to our shop and actually filmed um you know i guess working on it and stuff I actually end up driving it down to memphis on a uh, road trip so that's pretty pretty cool you guys definitely want to check that out but we're going to get the uh forklift uh, up here and we'll get a drug in the shop tonight probably let her warm up and then in the morning um we'll go through it and uh get her all checked out and see if she'll run all right so i got the forklift there i got the bucket picked up and these things actually have a uh, little catch here it goes on the cylinder it actually keeps this loader from sitting down on the ground so you can pick it up set that back down on there and then keep your bucket off the ground that way you can roll them around and move where you want to it's almost like they uh knew that these things wasn't going to run but it's kind of a cool built-in feature once we get them running and everything we will uh take those off and be back to normal again so we'll go find kevin we'll try to get this thing shoved in the shop what are you guys doing over here stealing tools stealing tools so each one of these unimox has auxiliary circuit on here You've got these two hoses they'll run these hydraulic tools a hydraulic chainsaw we got hydraulic uh, jackhammers and drills We've got bits and stuff for them so something about earlier i've got all kinds of those now you got one to give to somebody yeah so we're getting all the tools out so we're gonna go through all those we'll test all these and make sure they're working and all that good stuff Kevin, yeah, i'm ready for your assistance I'm dragging the unimog inside yeah. So you guys need some Unimog tools, we definitely got some of those too. So. It's pulling the drill out there now. Jay's got some jackhammer bits. Clay digger. It's even a Unimog jack right there. Ripper tooth? Ripper tooth. Ripper tooth. All right, let's go get this one out. So where you go grab a Unimog and look tired. I told them all it's about quitting time. We're going to work on this dude tomorrow. Yeah. Well, I think Wayne's going to help us too. Let me show him what's going on. I've got the bucket pinned up already while you're over there helping your Doing friend Doing nothing? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you just want me to shove you backwards all the way in the shop? Or? I love to go backwards. You want to go backwards or I can push you out and then... Do that. I'll push you out and then I'll get behind you. Okay. I'm going to push him out that way, and then I'll get behind him and shove him in the shop.
All right, we got the Unimog in the shop. Kevin's got some batteries. I'm gonna roll over our Unimog parts table, maybe. We got fuel filters, 18,000 pages of books. We got something stuck under my tire. It's freaking rocks. You think this one's gonna start? Oh yeah. So we got keys, filters, we got some packing kits, relays, we got our checklist. So I think the first thing we're gonna do is get our checklist going. We gotta see right serial numbers, hours, years. We got all these checks we gotta do, fluids, all kinds of good stuff. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna get the, uh, where's our custom red pin at? Oh, here it is. Our grading pin. The teachers wouldn't let you have these in school. We're gonna get the serial number down here. That one's showing rebuilt in seven of 2009. Write that down here. How many miles you got over there, Kevin? Five thousand three hundred. Five thousand three hundred. Like Does that make sense? You mean five thousand thirty? No, no, no. So we got fifty thousand miles on a Unimog. You're really confusing me. Fifty three hundred. Fifty three hundred. Even. And nine. Fifty three oh nine. Yeah. I didn't know we were getting quite this we get specific technical. on this. And this year is 1988. All right, I've got a thing here for the hours too. As you guys know, this one's rebuilt in 09. We've got an hour meter on the engine up here. It is showing two hours. So you guys are gonna say, why does it have 5,300 miles and two hours on it? So my guess is that speedometer is probably original to the truck from 1988. The hours are probably original from when they rebuilt this thing so that motor and when they overhauled it you know they put new wiring harnesses and all that good stuff in it it's probably been two hours ago in 2009 so and it looks like according to the door tag it's been sitting since 2012 so kevin's got the uh, battery tray pulled out don't you yeah you guys can see that's all humped up and frozen and but definitely no good we want to guess those batteries from 2009. So we got some new military batteries. The military has these special batteries they use in anything, where it's a Humvee, a tank, a military 850. They use the same battery in everything. So um, let's see what makes it simple. Keep the same battery. Yep, those batteries are made in 2009 when this truck was rebuilt. Original battery, so we're gonna go through here. Kevin's gonna stick some new batteries in here. These things are all 24 volt, um, like most things military. To get some new batteries in there, then usually what we do, we'll stick this thing up on the uh, lift here, and we'll go underneath, start checking fluids and all the differentials. Um, Wayne's gonna help us today. He's over next door. I'm gonna show him a walk around too. He's my Mechanic she's usually doing other stuff instead of doing videos, but he's gonna be over here today helping us I'm gonna walk him through this stuff, too All right, we're going up Now you're going up Show you. When we set these up, you gotta be, you know, something's not in all the way, you gotta be close, as close as you can get without hitting that thing, so you gotta watch this side of here. Alright, Kevin's got it up, he's gonna lock it on the locks, and then we're uh, gonna go through and check all these fluids out. Alright, so we're up under the truck here. Wayne's uh, been with us here for a few months. I'm showing him. He's never worked on these, so 
I'm gonna show him all the places to check on them. Kevin's uh, checking the plugs on these portal boxes right now. They've got two plugs on them. Portal. Portal hubs. Is that what you call them? Portal. So they've got two check places. You always pull the uh, lower plug out there. It should be running out that hole. If it's not, then you can fill it up with the upper plug hole up there. I'm just pulling that one out now. These all run gear oil in. That one's full. So Wayne's uh, checking the front and rear end there. They've got a simple uh, plug right there in them. But it's just repeat on everything. We get these up in there and look at everything, make sure the forklift guys ain't smashed anything. This one's actually really clean. A lot of times I'll get under here and smash stuff up. We'll check the other two uh, boxes in this transfer case. And all in all, it looks uh, looking pretty clean. Put the air dryer up there. Nice, Only clean, leaker. fresh oil, huh? We got a leaker. You probably need to get a 14 millimeter ratchet wrench, and you can use that adapter there, Wayne, and get this one out. Every time you say his name, I want to sing the song. <laughs> what song is that? Wayne's World Party Time Yeah, I usually stick that on there with a the ratchet wrench and get right to it. It's, everything on these things is tight quarters. Mercedes engineered them in the military decided to put their own crap on them and stack even more crap Nice and full good good all clean fresh oil Open the stuff around here. This thing's pretty nice. Did you let my big hammer get you? What are you doing? I found this big hammer in the toolbox. All right, I think uh, underneath there looks pretty good. A lot of times we've got to fix exhaust pipes and crap that's smashed up. And give a look around back here. Nothing, uh, nothing big showing up, so. When you guys get done there, we're gonna set her down on the ground. All right, we got her set down on the ground. I'm gonna check off the uh, stuff here. We got the differential front, gear reduction hubs, transmission oil. I think you guys are taking off the uh, transmission cover. Got these little rubber, or the engine cover, I guess. Motor cover. I've had a heck of a debate about engines and motors on uh, motor cover. Everybody's telling me that General motor. General Motors should rename their trucks and to General uh, Engines. Yep. Yeah. Well, and then no, some people be General Motors because they're going all electric. Yeah. <laughs> so they were just ahead of themselves. I'm glad you're a man. Wayne. Uh oh, what'd you find in there? Some mouse. Some of your friends. There's a baby badger over here. Baby badger. So right here, Wayne, there's uh, that red dipstick right there. You mm -hmm. pull it out, that's your power steering fluid. You gotta get that baby badger's nest out of there. Right here. Boy, nice and dry. Need some in it? Yeah. Yes, not even need to drop on it. Engine oil is on the other side. Of course, that's your antifreeze right there. I got some red uh, trans fluid for him. What do you got in there? I don't know, but that's probably got a rattlesnake or something in it. Are you scared to touch it or what? <laughs> Where's I think the trash they can? Pee and poop in that stuff. That's how they call it home. <laughs> Isn't that what you do, Kevin? Yes. I'm I pretty sure it's frozen them out. Got some oil in it. All right, I'll get you some uh, power steering fluid. Looks like you need a little bit of antifreeze too, don't you? Yep. All right, Wayne's getting the fluids topped off in there. Kevin's over here, what'd you do? Mm -hmm. You didn't wait on me. I took these things off. So there's two fuel filter canisters that go up right here. Is that right? Yeah. Took the old ones out and they look like new. They do. Got you some new ones. 
there's two o-rings in here we'll replace those and we'll show you how to there's a little uh, primer pump right here actually we'll you guys see that fuel coming out there i'm pumping that up so these are actually the bleeder screws right here so we'll put those filters on and then we'll pump that primer pump until we get good solid fuel coming out of these and then shut those off and we'll uh, go on to checking out the rest of the stuff all right kevin got the fuel filters in there got them pumped up with the primer pump and bled out testing the lights all the lights lights are working so far um let's check in the fan belts over there we got um clutch and brake fluid this first one actually does the clutch reservoir and the uh, brake it feeds off and then this one does the brake also so those are all good i'll check the air filter here wayne's getting ready to blow the mouse nest out of the cab looks really clean i'm not even gonna pull that out make sure there's no nest in there so this thing's only been running a couple hours since it was uh done our steering back fluid clutch fluid coolant we checked the hydraulic oil in the tank ship. Check. Check. This one's full. Is that one good? They've got a tank on each side. That one over there is good. Okay. Full. Full to the max. Where were we at here? Hydraulic tank left and right. Tire pressure. Kevin did that already. Belts. Lights. The lubricating stuff. Have we done that yet? No gas the pedal. Do the back hose. You did put new batteries in it. Yep. Mm -hmm. You got fuel filters, air filter, new fuel. Um, fuses. I'll check those when it gets running. I'm gonna pull that uh, little brass filter off down there, Wayne. I was showing you a pair of pliers. So there's on this fuel tank. There's one more. I guess what you call a primary filter, but there's a little brass uh, strainer filter in there. I always like to pull those out. See what's in there. Some kind of I don't know what you call that. It's like something you see on an old tractor. It's awesome is what it is. And this is what this is. is a tractor. Not a very good one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Mercedes. They're awesome. Work. You know he's gonna lose all your prime now. You just got worked Thank up you. on your filters. Thank you for that. So you're gonna have to redo that. Thank you. Please hold. Loading. That thing looks really clean. Anything in there? Just a little bit dumb. Not much. I'll dump that out. I'd say you put that back on there. the water separator on one of my so that tractors. that just unscrews out and you can clean it and put it back on that one's really clean it's a good sign so far now you've just got to go bleed it out again it's Do a 13 millimeter I'm just, I'm just happy to bleed so whenever you broke that system it's lost its prime again so he's gonna have to pump that fuel back up and bleed it up there because there's a pocket of air in there so these engines do not like air whatsoever they're actually a six cylinder mercedes i think it's 352 cubic inches they've got a bosch inline injection pump on them and they do not like air at all isn't that right that is correct kevin's gonna bleed her out again he's gonna crack those bleeder screws and can we tighten it up or just let it have a little air? yeah let it have a little air so he struggles so that little primer pump i'll turn this light on <laughs> primer pumps right here you pump that up and bleed out at your oil filter engine air compressor right there those little fuel pumps are famous for going out i do keep those in stock so i think we're getting close to be able to start it up all right so we're about ready to try to start it up for the first time 
what we'll do we'll get the uh we'll raise this uh front bucket up i don't know if i showed you guys here but they got these transport locks in here we actually put these in we rolled it in here we'll get it fired up if it's working we'll raise that up take those off put them back down there in the storage position and then uh, we'll probably engage the pto for the backhoe so these things have two hydraulic pumps on there's one on the engine that drives off a belt that runs that front loader all the time so it runs constantly that one does there and it also runs these auxiliary controls and then there's um another high volume pump puts out like 30 gallons per minute or so that runs off the pto it actually runs this case backhoe back here so we'll get it fired up engage that pto we'll unfold the uh backhoe out these are actually boom locks here they uh they're actually in the down position so when we get it going we'll raise those up they actually come in and clip over that hole right there so we'll raise those up um there's a boom lock up here you pull this handle and it boom lock so right now that back will swiveled over in the um, storage position so there's a cylinder down in there that actually will lay that back will plumb up with this uh, lever right there fold out and like i said that's a regular case case series backhoe like a c or d model backhoe so wayne's up here cleaning the window off kevin's getting some wd-40 filled up that's one thing you got to have a bunch of on these things everything's been sticking stopping and not working and so when we fold this backhoe out we'll spray these cylinders real good we've already sprayed them once with wd-40 we'll spray them a couple more times help lubricate those seals then we'll wipe everything off and see what's leaking and go from there all right went over some of the controls with wayne he's going to um fire it up there's a battery disconnect there in the center yep it's on so we're going to be watching for oil pressure of course if they don't fire up we'll give it a little assistance there with some starting fluid start we'll give her some fuel got your turn the key on all the way got that nice buzzer too Been sitting for about 10 years, so it's going to take a minute. Trying. Built oil pressure. Got oil pressure. You got it uh, on the floor? Oh, yeah, she's on the floor. May have to give her a little help there over there.
you got on the floor? Getting there somewhere. I'm gonna help it here at the primer pump. Sucking air in it. Um. You want to open your bleeders back up? And that primer pump act like it wasn't uh, pumping real well. Somewhere this thing's getting some air in the fuel. It's not running quite right. So, all right, here's the problem. This primer pump shot and leaking over here. Just shut the power off. So, as I told you guys. We've got those primer pumps in stock. And there's a reason why. I want to get a light. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that thing's gushing fuel out, which that means the fuel's getting out. It's sucking air in, so got a light there. You see that thing squirting fuel out there. So it's probably o rings It's all my strength, is what it was. It's all your fault. You touched no, it. It's all my strength. So if that's all that's wrong, we'll be doing it's good. Because I've been lifting. So we can probably just unscrew this top, put a new primer pump on it up there, instead of taking the whole thing off. We'll get that fixed, and guess what? You'll have to bleed her out again. Yes! All right, so we got the primer pump off the old one. This is actually the whole complete um, pump. It actually runs off the camshaft of the engine. It pushes, pumps this way. This is a little hand primer. That's what was leaking, so we just pulled that out. We're gonna replace it. Uh, over there, reprime up the filters and try again. It's for your sound and mic. It's that better. don't look like a microphone, Bob. Yes. Nobody can see you right now because of that light. It's a wrench. Here, Somebody thinks the you're special. There you go. Let's get it on him. Oh, look at, it, look at his face light up. Uh, look, that's the happiest <laughs> he's been in months. <laughs> All right, he's going to try again. Kevin, go stand by the exhaust. <laughs> Give her a little help. Help us on the way, man. Need a little help? Uh-oh. Go over and pump on that while he's cranking on it. This is a team effort, I tell you. Yeah. Sometimes they gotta help the primer pumps out. It's for your sound and mic. That better. don't look like a microphone, Bob. Yes. Nobody can see you right now because of that light. It's a wrench. Here, Somebody thinks away. you're special. There you go. Let's get it on him. Oh, it's look better. at it. look at his face light up. Uh, look, that's the happiest <laughs> he's been in months. <laughs> All right, he's gonna try again. Kevin, go stand by the exhaust. <laughs> Give her a little help. Help us on the way, man. Need a little help? Uh-oh. Go over and pump on that while he's cranking on it. This is a team effort, I tell you. Yeah. Sometimes they gotta help the primer pumps out. I'm gonna help him out a little bit here. So he's yep.
Well, you still got it. Huh? Is it hard? Try it one more time.
want to get a pan for that. Blow the hose on the bucket curl, bub. We have our first one sold here. Did you sell one already? Yeah, I got a guy. I need to go over some numbers with you here. On, he that wants is. Every, every accessory we have. Every accessory. So if you're looking for 11 of these, you need to call Jay over here. So we do have a bunch of them for sale. Yep. You well, guys are going to get that hose replaced. Then we'll uh, see what else blows next. All right, guys. Got our new hose on there. All up in there. We're ready to char her up. Char again. You going to fire her up? All right, let's we'll see what happens. All right, guys, we uh, lost all the audio here for some reason. I, when the camera fell off, we must have knocked the medium model loose or something. I don't know, but unfortunately for the uh, rest of this video, another 10 minutes or so, we have no audio whatsoever. So what I'm doing now, just testing the functions about the backhoe out. Um, Guys are lubing up the cylinders and making sure nothing's leaking on it. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So we're just gonna cycle it through its paces and make sure everything's working on it here. So big thing with these, they've been sitting for a long time and nothing's been uh, nothing's been used. So we'll spray that WD-40 on there to help lube the seals up. If they do start leaking, we'll go ahead and repack them. But you see them swinging around side to side and all that good stuff so i'm going to continue running it checking it out making sure everything's working good and don't have any leaks popping up and then we'll uh, move on to a test drive all right so what i'm doing here is actually running a switch here at the back of the machine it's actually raising the uh, bucket up and down there so they do that so when you're digging with the backhoe back here you can raise your bucket up push yourself on along so that way you don't have to get in and out of the machine so checking all those functions I'm pulling the uh, switch here to check the auxiliary hydraulics make sure they're functioning and everything so cycling it a few times make sure nothing's sticky on it those switches back in the back there's two of them um, one does the bucket up and down the other one actually bumps the throttle up and down so I'm explaining to Wayne there how the stuff works so when uh, he knows when he works on the rest of them he knows what's going on with them so All right, here's these two switches I was talking about in the back. One raises and lowers the buckets. The other one sets the uh, idle up and down there for the uh, engine. So now I think we're about ready to um, go for a test drive. We're gonna back her out in the shop there. I'm still explaining some stuff to Wayne there. We're gonna back her out and see how she does. All right, we're up in the cab now and I'm explaining to Wayne, showing him how uh, things work. Got a battery disconnect, um, start switch and all that stuff. So. Um, of course, we're looking at all the gauges and everything, showing the sh gear shifters. Uh, these things have a four-speed transmission. You can actually split them two different times. So that uh, shifter right there, I just moved up and down. That's a little gear splitter, and there's another one right next to me. It's actually got high and low range in the reverse, so it gives you 16 gears forward and uh, eight in reverse if you want to use them. All those two levers I'm moving in, I run the front bucket and everything. So. Um, We'll get her backed outside and see what she does. All right, backing out of the shop now. You can see there's not much uh, leg room over in that passenger side. It's pretty cramped up, so driver's side's not so bad. I don't know if it's something I'd want to sit on for hours on end. So, but anyway, we're uh, testing out the four-wheel drive right now. They have. Uh, it's all air air operated, so you can kick it in four wheel drive, and then you can actually kick it in four wheel drive with the diff slocks. So right now, I'm looking at the uh, tires. You can hear them grabbing in the gravel there. Um, if we had the audio, so we're gonna drive around the shop a couple times, bang through all the gears, make sure all the uh, functions work on that. So make sure all the gauges and stuff work. I did notice the uh, speedometer wasn't working on this uh, in this test drive, so. We're going to get that pulled back in and look at it. I think Randy's going to go ahead and wash it because it's like a super warm day out today. So he's going to take it and wash it when it gets done. We'll pull it back in and uh, get that checked over. But all in all, everything else checked out on it really well. So I'm going through all the gears and splitting them. You see I'm getting ready to split them right there. I just split it into the low side, flick it back up in the high side there. So that's a very minor change. It's only probably a couple hundred RPM difference, but... 
um, it is handy when you're in your higher gears and something, you know, climbing a hill or something like that. So, but anyway, I hate that the uh, audio got messed up. So I don't know. That's the first time for me on that. So, but anyway, we do have a bunch more of these uh, coming up for sale. So if you guys seen this video, um, definitely give me a thumbs up if you liked what you seen. Um, if you're not done, so definitely subscribe. You never know what I'm getting in. So um, two weeks ago, I would have no ideas getting Unimogs in. So. I have bought and sold probably over a hundred of these things in the uh, past, um, so we've been around a lot of them. Uh, this is not our first go around for that, so we do have quite a bit of experience with them. So, but uh, definitely, if you're in the market, definitely give us a call. I'll put the phone number and uh, email down in the description. Um, we're sliding the hood back on there, so this is more kind of a a walkthrough, um, how stuff, how we go through stuff, especially on these. Kind of showing Wayne um, just because he's new on these. He's a talented mechanic and everything, but these are kind of a different animal than what he's used to working on. So trying to show him that kind of stuff. So, But all in all, um, that one was a pretty clean machine. I probably will try to do another video um, of just the, uh, just the operating video on that so it's not all uh, messed up with this one since the audio is no good on this one anyway. So... But uh, definitely leave some comments below if you like his stuff. And uh, guys, we will catch you on the, the next one.